Hello, welcome to part three in our series of lectures on how to observe the sun at local apparent noon for a position fix. Um, I'm Commander Chris Kreitlein presenting these, this series of lectures to you. Uh, I hope you've uh, watched part one and part two so you're ready today to proceed with part three. Uh, before I start, I'd like to mention my book, if you're serious about learning celestial navigation, I highly recommend this short little book, Simple Celestial, Navigation by the Heavens Made Easy. In this book, I teach the method that we're talking about today, observing the sun at local apparent noon. But I also teach the more complex method. It's called the intercept method using an assumed position. Now that method of course is the one used by professional navigators uh, to find their position at sea. That method is a little more difficult to learn but I present it in very clear terms in this manual. That method is used along with any of the 57 stars, the four planets uh, that we use, the sun and the moon. Uh, so it's really the one that if you're serious about celestial navigation it's the one you need to learn. Uh, shooting the sun at local apparent noon is pretty easy and fast to do, but you're restricted to doing it only when the sun is on your meridian at noon. So it does have some limitations. The other method, the intercept method using an assumed position, is much more versatile in that regard. So I highly recommend, if you're serious, to get this book. It's available at globizon.com. G L O B I. Zon.com. Download the order form um, and send it in with a check and I'll rush this book to you. Okay? Alright, let's proceed with what we want to talk about today. Uh, once again, in, in uh, part one we talked about the mechanics of shooting the sun. In part two we, we got into some of the terminology that you need to know uh, to proceed with part three. Okay, so let's uh, step into it. Okay, this is where we stopped last time to begin our discussion on the equation of time. However, before we continue, we need to do a quick review to make sure that you have really in your um, mind some very important principles that you're going to need to make sense of this whole process. First of all, local apparent noon is when the sun is exactly on your meridian of longitude at its highest point in the sky at that day. Now the sun can be north of you, it can be south of you, or it can be right over top of you depending on of course uh, that time of year as the sun makes its transit north and south and then back north again over the year. But the sun has to be on your meridian of longitude at its highest point in the sky. That is local apparent noon. Now remember, the sun crosses 15 degrees of longitude each hour of its transit across the sky. And again, the declination of the sun is its north-south position. It changes daily throughout the year from the Tropic of Capricorn in the Southern Hemisphere north to the Tropic of Cancer when we have summer and then it heads south again uh, eventually for us to have winter when it gets down there on December the 21st to the Tropic of Capricorn. Remember these principles. Again, universal time is based on the Sun's position relative to the pr top, uh, prime meridian. The Sun exactly over the prime meridian is 12 o'clock universal time. Everything in the nautical almanac is based on universal time. So we have to have a chronometer on board to tell us so that we can make sense of what's in the nautical almanac. Greenwich hour angle is important. That's how things are listed in the nautical almanac. It's the number of degrees westward from the prime meridian. Longitude of course goes east and west but Greenwich hour angle is only measured to the west. 010 east longitude is a Greenwich hour angle of 350 degrees. So make sure you understand that. Okay, let's get into the equation of time. Now, our little man here is standing on the earth pointing directly over his, over his head at the sun. It's local apparent noon for him. Now the earth is going to rotate 360 degrees over the next day. Okay, so let's move forward 
one day. When he looks straight up, is he pointing at the sun? No, he's not. Why? The sun, I mean, the earth turned 360 degrees in 24 hours, but it also was taking part in its orbit around the sun. So there's a tiny little bit of time right there between um, straight over his head at his zenith and where the sun is. That little part is called the equation of time, and we have to take that into consideration when we make corrections to our calculations on observing the sun at local apparent noon. You'll see how we use this later on, but remember, this little part is called the equation of time that you either have to add or subtract to your calculation because the Earth not only rotates 360 degrees in 24 hours, but it also moves around the sun a little bit. Equation of time. Now, how does the sun at local apparent noon give us latitude and longitude? Let's start out with latitude. If you're in a sailboat in this graphic description at zero degrees latitude and the sun is over your head at the equator, it's at your zenith, you measure with the sextant, you're going to measure 090. That is your sextant height that we abbreviate HS. Your latitude is zero, but your HS is 90. Now let's move to the North Pole. If you're at the North Pole, your latitude is 90, but the sun still over the equator is going to have an HS of zero. It's right on your horizon. So you see the relationship there. If you're at 45 degrees north latitude and shoot the sun, you're going to have an HS of 45 degrees. Now we can make a formula that describes this relationship. 90 minus the HS of the sun equals latitude. But this is only when the sun is on the equator. Of course, the sun is only at the equator twice a year, once when it's going north and once when it's going south. So we're going to have to modify this formula a little bit. And this is what it is. 90, degree, 90 minus the HS of the sun plus and minus the sun's declination will equal your latitude. That is the relationship. Don't worry too much about this now. Uh, later when we work an actual site, you'll see how this comes into play. But it's actually quite simple if you think about it a little bit. Okay, remember the sun has to be on your meridian, directly north or south of your position at noon for you to use it to determine a position fix. Okay, now let's consider longitude. Longitude is entirely different. It's, it's figured entirely different. It's figured with your chronometer. You compare your local apparent noon with noon at the prime meridian. This gives you the sun's transit time since it was noon at the prime meridian, at the Greenwich uh, meridian. You then take that time and multiply it by 15 degrees. Remember we talked in our last uh, discussion, and, and I rehashed it here, that the sun travels 15 degrees each hour. So you merely multiply that time by 15 degrees to derive your longitude. Um, this was made possible by the invention of a chronometer accurate enough for maritime use by John Harrison, the fellow in this photograph or, or drawing. I guess that's a woodcut. Anyway, and in the bottom left is his cr first chronometer, H1. Okay, so see, cr using the chronometer for longitude is entirely different than how we figure latitude. So there's, it's going to be a two-step process. Let's look at a graphic example. Here we have a sailboat at a west longitude position. We have the prime meridian with Greenwich Observatory there. The sun, as we said before, arcs across the sky each day 15 degrees an hour. So it's merely a matter of comparing our local apparent noon, which in this depiction is at 1800, with land at the prime meridian, which is always 1200. What do we do? Well, we take our land, we subtract it from Greenwich, or rather in this case, subtract Greenwich from our land. That gives us a six hours of the sun's transit time. We then multiply it by 15 degrees and it gives us our longitude. It's a very simple process to work this out, but you've got to figure the exact time of local apparent noon where you are to make it work. And we're going to learn how to do that. Okay, this is end of part three. 
please uh, tune in for part four and we'll continue and eventually we're going to get into actually working a site but it's important that you understand all of these phenomenons, phenomena and principles uh, before we actually start working a problem so it'll all make sense to you. So I'll see you for part four.